To close off um, for the last couple of minutes before the end of today, could I ask Baz and um, Elko to come up onto the, um, onto the platform? Thank you. Good afternoon. And the purpose of this uh, session is the launch of the Directory of Open Access Books. And this launch, actually, the, the, this directory is started by OAPEN. And that's why I will start with a few words on OAPEN. OAPEN is currently a foundation, but it has started as a European co-funded project. Came out from six university presses in Europe, the support of two Dutch universities. What we wanted to do was develop and implement a sustainable open access publication model for academic books in humanities and social sciences. Lots of deliverables came out of the project, among them the Open Library, which was launched in the Frankfurt Book Fair in 2010. The project closed, closed in March 2011, and the Open continued as a foundation supported by a number of Dutch academic institutions, especially NWO, the Dutch Organization for Scientific Research. It's mainly dedicated to open access publishing of academic books. It's a platform for full text dissemination of open access books, provides services to publishers and libraries. Three main areas, you can re see them here, quality assurance, aggregation and deposit, discovery and dissemination. What we want to become is a European deposit service for open access peer-reviewed books and to support open access mandates from funders. Activities at the moment, uh, the platform is the OAPEN library currently has more than 50 publishers contributing about 1,600 open access books. All publishers are reviewed before admission and information on peer review procedures is published on their website. Through the OAPEN library, we try to increase discoverability and visibility of the open access books. Maintain daily data feeds to enable integration into library catalogs, work with main content aggregators and library suppliers, and it's also a content aggregator for Europeana. We take part in several projects that are listed here, and I'm not going into them in detail, looking at the time. So, why did we start a directory of open access books? Well, the first reason is that it's a great opportunity to promote open access book publishing. And to a large extent, this directory of open access books was made possible by the directory of open access journals, DOAJ, which has started in 2003 and just celebrated thus its 10th birthday. It is a good example of how a service can help to promote open access increase visibility and usage, and support the quality of open access journals in this case. And if the directory of open access books is successful, it will do the same. Bring together all stakeholders in open access book publishing. We'll provide an opportunity to discuss requirements for open access books, discuss licensing and review practices, and help to determine quality criteria. And hopefully, it will develop into a list of trusted open access book publishers. A question that has been asked sometimes is what is the difference between OAPEN and the Directory of Open Access Books? Well, some say it's a difficult question, I say it's a good question. <laughs> Both focus on open access books. Both try to increase visibility and discoverability of these books and both think of ways to ensure the quality of their collection. But OAPEN is primarily a deposit service designed to hold the full text of books and provide full text search and retrieval. The directory is primarily a discovery service, collecting only metadata and linking back 
to the open access box. And due to its start as a project, OAPEN currently has both free and libre OAPEN books in its collection, whereas the directory is restricted to books with open access licenses. And again, the way OAPEN is developed, it mainly focuses on humanities and social sciences. The directory tries to cover all disciplines. The most striking difference lies in where OAPEN and the directory are headed. OAPEN intends, as I said, to become a European deposit service for open access monographs to support open access mandates from funders. The DOAB will focus on becoming an authoritative list of open access book publishers for all stakeholders in scholarly communication. I think this will do as an introduction. I'd like now to invite to two sponsors of the directory to come to the stage and say a few words. Veronica Spinka from Springer Open Books and Sam Bruinsma from Brill, please. So please, the floor is yours. You can decide the order yourself. Hi, everyone. First of all, I would like to highlight the hard work done by the DOAP team enabling the launch of the directory, directory of Open Access Books today. Usually, the success story of a new product starts after its launch. With DOAB, it's totally different. DOAB is already a successful, established tool in the scientific community. It, librarians already awarded the UAB two prizes, the best new, best new Product Prize in 2012 and the Mars Free Reference Prize in this year. So just let's, let me say congratulations, DOAB, for being such a success already. <laughs> OK. Um, um, with regard to open access uh, publishing, Brill has always said that we support and are willing to participate in sustainable models. We are not completely sure that the traditional model is that already. We still publish some 500 monographs annually, and you too, of course, at Springer, uh, but we are seriously looking at open access book, book <coughs> at open access journals and books. Um, we are not an insignificant OA book publisher ourselves. We publish about 80 titles currently in open access on different platforms. Um, further, we sponsor the IFLA Brill Award for Open Access Monographs, which incidentally was won this year by open book publishers represented at the panel this morning. And we are the sponsor of the Directory of Open Access Books. The main reason is that we believe that some form of certification is needed to make sure open access book publishing will succeed. Uh, it's all about quality, as we saw in our, the last session. Because we think it is extremely important that students and faculty have a single directory to go to for locating high quality OA content. Just as it is extremely useful for authors to have an instrument to identify companies and organizations that take scholarly publishing in open access seriously. Therefore, and the, web, and the directory of open access books is committed to set a quality standard uh, in their admission guidelines, as we just heard. So therefore, we congratulate the web. Thank you. Thank you both for your kind words, and last but not least, certainly also for your support for the directory. I now hand over to Elko Ferbeda, director of OAPEN, to introduce and launch the directory. Thank you, Bas. Um, this is just going to be a, a quick overview of, of what uh, the DOAB DOAP uh, is doing, um, hopefully in a, in a couple of minutes. So. Um, what it is, is a discovery service for open access books. It's a searchable, searchable index to metadata uh, to, of peer-reviewed monographs, and it links back to 
um, uh, the open access publication, but also to other editions that are sold through web shops of the publisher or vendors, online vendors. Um, we uh, developed it, uh, actually thought of it a long time ago in 2009 uh, at the first OASPA conference in Lund with, uh, in conversation with uh, Lars Björnshager and uh, David Prosser, I think, uh, then director of uh, Spark Europe. And we developed it with Lars and Sempertool, who both also developed the Directory of Open Access Journals purposefully because these two brands uh, are closely connected to each other and we think DOAB wouldn't have been possible without the success of DOAJ. So they are still involved and Sempertool has provided the platform and hosts and maintains the Directory of Open Access Books. We uh, announced DOAB in February last year and launched it in April. And uh, we did so in a beta version, and this is an important point because we weren't sure how users would perceive this service, and we felt we should be interacting with users, with publishers, with libraries, with anybody interested uh, in this directory to find out the needs of users. So if you look at those user needs, you, you're led uh, straight back to, I think, to Kathleen's talk just now. Um, it's all about quality. Um, uh, the users support the idea that there should be requirements and standards for quality, but what quality is, is of course hotly debated. They would uh, like to see more transparency about what kind of procedures went into a book. Often it is not clear at all. And uh, some of the suggestions went to a sort of an icon system, identifying different types of peer review and we might look into that. Um, the next point I'm going to quote. As long as these standards remain flexible and open to a variety of quality control mechanisms from editorial control to open peer review and post-publication peer review, it's okay. Um, the problem is, of course, that being quite strict in your requirements in admitting publishers as uh, listed in the directory on the one hand and being quite flexible and what types of quality control are sufficient to be listed are almost incompatible. So I'm sure we will be very busy with this uh, question of what is control, or oh, sorry, what is quality in um, open access books. Our current requirements are, and we made these um, with OASPA, twofold. Academic books in uh, DOAP shall be available under an open access license. We don't uh, say which license. Uh, it can be a Creative Commons license, but there are other sorts of open access licenses, and we review them. And the important one is also academic books in DOAP shall be subjected to independent and external peer review prior to publication. I'm quite sure we will be trying to refine and revise these requirements. They were um, uh, written down when we launched in beta. We haven't changed them. We didn't find clear um, indications that we should be changing them in the, the survey we held or the discussion. So we'll keep them, but we'll keep thinking about them at the same time. This is exactly the same process that is going on at the Director of Open Access Journals, where a couple of weeks ago, um, DOAJ announces uh, new selection criteria and they're open for your comments, they're open for review until um, halfway this month, so you still have a couple of weeks I think, and I, th I think it's a very interesting um, uh, uh, idea to, to revise the selection criteria with which they started. So um, what we do is we try to um, improve discoverability of open access books. We connect with libraries. We have a, a harvesting system. Uh, all the metadata are freely available for all libraries and content aggregators. We also actively engage with content aggregators to import our metadata. And there are some listed here. We work on search engine optimization. And we have an automated feed from the OAPEN library if the licenses are uh, compliable with the uh, requirements of DOAB. Our goals are to improve uh, discoverability and to provide an authoritative list of open access book publishers, uh, support quality assurance and standards, and promote open access book publishing. 
we set it up and paid for the development of, um, of DOAP uh, from the foundation, but we will follow the example of DOAJ in uh, trying to make this a community-supported um, service. So we are, we are uh, looking for support from libraries, publishers, aggregators, um, and consortia, uh, and of course also sponsors. So some of you might be receiving a mail pretty soon. Um, since the launch, we've been lucky to receive quite some interest from publishers and from libraries. And as Veronica already said, we already received a couple of prizes. Uh, there is a, a strong interest from publishers. We grew, almost doubled in size. We almost have 50 publishers, and there are quite a few pending uh, to be listed. And we're approaching the number of 1,500 books. And I'm quite confident that that number will grow in the near future. So thank you. Um, we are going to now officially launch with a, a little animation. Um, here we go.